In these next few tutorials, we're going to learn how to add a table view, how to add a data source to it, and then how to customize a few of the things. To begin, we're going to go over to our main.storyboard file. By clicking on it, we'll end up seeing our UI view controller in the middle of our screen. Now we need to add the actual table view to the view controller. So in order to do that, let's go down to our object library to the bottom right which is the third icon on this shelf and we'll go down to the search menu here and type in table view now when we type in table view there's three different options you're going to want the one that just says table view we'll left click and drag that out to our view controller now as you do so you have some guidelines that show up we can end up trying to align it perfectly but what I usually like to do is even if I think I have it aligned perfectly I need to make sure that I have constraints now I could do the manual labor of doing a bunch of constraints or I can end up having the program try to reset the constraints and make them itself so that's what I'm gonna do for the time being I will end up left clicking on the table view cell here go up to editor go to resolve auto layout issues and go to reset to suggested constraints by doing so that will end up making constraints based on where it's at on my view controller now it's nice that I had the table view but if I were to run it right now I wouldn't really have anything but just open lines so what I need to do is I need to connect the data source in order to do that I'm going to left click on my table view again and go to my inspector and make sure that I'm on the connections inspector which looks like a right arrow inside of a circle the very top option says outlets and it has data source inside of it so I'm going to end up going over to the open circle that is by data source if the circle is open that means there is no connections right now if it's filled in that means there is a connection so since there's no connection if I hover over the circle it'll show a little plus sign and I'm going to left click and drag that to my view controller icon which is right here in my storyboard now when I let go it should have connected and just to double check left click on your table view and take a look over here now you see the data source is connected to the view controller with that being said now we need to go to our viewcontroller.swift and do some coding. So go over here to the left inside of your file browser and click on viewcontroller.swift. Now before we begin, we need to add a new UI class. And the UI class we have to add is one that refers to the table view data source. So we're going to type in a comma, UI, table view, data source. It'll come up here so I'll double click on it and I'll add the rest of the code now there will be a little red debug icon that shows up on line 11 and if we click on it it says that your view controller does not conform to the protocol of UI table view data source the reason being is because for the data source UI to work we need to add a few methods now if you need to refresh on your methods you can hold down the option key while hovering over that specific method and double click on it and it will come up with an actual documentation or reference for you to use so for example I'll need three different ones to use here I'll need this table view cell for row at index path and you can see it shows both the Swift and objective C declaration of it I'll also need the number of sections in table view it shows the exact same thing gives you information on what it does and last but not least I'll also need the table view number of rows and section now if you don't remember these methods you can always come back here and get the code for it but if you do remember the methods you could always start going down into your code and start typing so I'll left click by this open bracket on line 11 I'll hit return two times on my keyboard and I'll start typing out some of these methods so the first one I'm going to start off with is number of sections so I'll start typing in number and right off the bat since I have the UI table view data source method up here 
it is referring to that and it sees that I want the number of sections in table view. Pretty neat, pretty easy. So I'll double click on it and now that's inserted into my actual script. Right here where it says code, I need to change that to identify how many sections are inside my table view. So the function is called number of sections in table view. It's looking for the table view on our storyboard. It is making sure that it's actually defined as a UI table view. And it's asking how many sections would you like? Now when it comes to the table view, I like to call the sections columns personally. So for now, I'm only going to want one. So what I can do is I can type in return one. And that's all I need to create one section or one column if you like to call it that as well. I will go down to line 17 and this time I need to call on the number of rows in the section. This is straight from the table view. So instead of typing in number of rows, I'll type in just the words table view and I'll have a huge list that pops up. But if I read through them, I can find the one I want, which is the number of rows in section. If you double click on that, it will insert the code here. So this code is saying, we're gonna look for our table view again, make sure that it is a UI table view. And we're going to look at the number of rows in section and we're gonna look for the actual section itself. And we're gonna change that into an integer. So how many rows do I want for my section? In this case, I'm just gonna go with five. So again, I'll just type in return five. So the first two methods were pretty easy to call upon. This last one is a little bit different, but it starts with the table view again. So let's type in table view. And as you type in table view, you'll have them all come up. There's this one called cell for row at index path. I'll double click on that. And again, we have our code here. So right now, what this is doing is it's looking for the table view and it's trying to figure out which cell are you currently on. So for example, I'll end up giving them an identifier later. So I'll just say test. So am I on the first cell? Am I on the second? Am I on the third? It's making an index of all the cells and accounting for them. So in the code, I have to define a variable called cell. So I'll type in var cell, and this will actually eagle the UI table view cell. And we're gonna have the open and close parentheses to instantiate the actual cell. We're gonna go down to the next line, and for this next line, we want some text. We want a label to end up being inside of these cells. So I'll call on my cell variable that I just created and then I will identify that I want a text label inside of it. And the text label is a form of text and I'm just gonna put down test in a string. Last but not least, I'll go down to the next line and then I'll type in return cell. By doing all this code, I will have one little pop-up and this is basically saying that there is an unresolved identifier. That is because the I in UI table view is not capitalized. So after I do that, I'll only have one more error. And this error says UI label does not have a member named text. So at the end of this text label, I just have to add a question mark. There we go. So after you do all of that, you can go up and debug. For me, I have an iOS device, but I don't have my actual Apple's developer license yet. So I can click on here and change it. I'll change it to the resizable iPad, and then I will just click on play, or in other words, debug, and that will debug it for me. So as you can see, when your actual debugger comes up and the program shows, you have your five different rows all saying test. You can left click and drag up and down if the screen's big enough. As you can see, I'm doing right now. And it's all functioning correctly. So in the next lesson, what we're gonna do is we're actually, instead of just having these all say test, we're going to add some data to it. So stick around.